the looting of America. Over the last few days, I've been watching what's been going on. It has been absolutely crazy. Here in Atlanta, the looters got a hold of a Tesla and drove it through the mall. Now, there's right and there's wrong. What happened to George Floyd was extremely wrong. It was tragic. It was heartbreaking. However, what does stealing a Tesla and driving it through the mall has to do with the injustices that was done to George Floyd? Let me go ahead and give you some of my thoughts on what if these people were proactive, like if these people were going to the cop's house and they were attacking the cop's family and they were burning down his house, that would make sense. Direct results for bad actions happening to the person who commit, but kind of like the thing that happened with George Zimmerman. George Zimmerman was getting into repeated situations with law enforcement and nothing ever happened to him. It's like people were afraid to touch him. So I don't understand because I don't have a looter's mindset. I don't know what the, about this looting thing. I'm keeping my ass at home. I'm not out here. I'm not going to be part of the looting. But understand that I have a few thoughts that people are so frustrated that they're just wilding out. I think that's one of the things that's going on. People are just literally wilding out and they're taking their frustrations out on buildings and businesses and people. If you watch the footage, people are being beat up, shot. There was this couple that tried to defend their jewelry store and the guy, the husband, they kept him inside and they were wearing out his wife with a two by four. I want you to think, what kind of mindset do you have to hold down a woman and hit her with a two by four? What kind of unmitigated anger? I'm like, it, it, it's just crazy what's going on right now. And this is part of, I think people are waking up to things were not as good as you were told. And they're just like, okay, a few months ago, I had a job, I was paying my bills, I was okay. Now I'm like in this economic hell and I'm, at, I'm mad. I'm really, really mad. I'm angry and somebody needs to pay. I don't care who has to pay, but somebody got to pay. And I, I feel that that is what's going on right now because from a rational standpoint, none of this stuff makes any sense. None of it. And also going back to my earlier video, I think there's a third hand stirring the pot, but this third hand couldn't stir the pot if people were not where they are. And the lockdowns, which are looking to be like a really bad ideal, because what it did was, because essentially, you know, people are like, I'm going out, I don't care about no coronavirus, I'm gonna live my life, I'm gonna do what I need to do, I'm going to be out here doing my thing, and businesses are still shutting down, and businesses are still closing, and businesses are still laying off people, and unemployment is rising. So, one of the things that I see happening is America's got to calm down. And this is going to be hard because some of the issues that are facing people, like I said in the recent video, this goes way beyond George Floyd. This go, you know, George, what George, George Floyd was the fuse. He was the, let's go, let's go ride out, let's go wild out, let's go to burn up our city. He was the impetus for all of that. But these issues, this unmitigated anger, this has been simmering for a long time. And people are starting to educate themselves. Every day on Facebook, I see all of these arguments and counter arguments, like people are still on it. You know, like someone left a comment on here, like you still believe in this fake virus? Yeah, you know, people died. I mean, there, there's a reality to it. There is a reality to the virus 
And also, when people were out and protesting a few weeks ago, now the virus count has gone up, and I fully expect in two to three weeks, the virus count to skyrocket again, because people out just like, I'm living my life, I don't care. I'm out here protesting for George Floyd. I'm out my house, because I'm tired of being cooped up in my house, man. I'm, I'm getting out here, I'm doing some stuff. I'm protesting, I'm representing my rights. And there are some people who are protesters whose protesting is heartfelt. They, they really feel the anguish. They, they, they see the unjust, the injustice. But there's another group of folks out there. You know who you are, you looters. Like the white girl who was like dubbed an employee by the news acres, which was just crazy. She was looting. She's a looter. And never in my life have I seen in these protests so many white people setting stuff on fire, getting in fights with the police, looting, stealing, beating up people. And this is one of the things is like, like I said, this is very much like the purge. This where you can just unleash all of your primal desires. Because that's what we're seeing. We're seeing a lot of unmitigated anger just being released. People getting it out their systems, people expressing themselves, people doing what they're doing. And also, you know, five finger Becky, it's like taking some stuff from Tarjay, it's taking some stuff from Louis Vuitton. People out here just getting it, getting it in. It's like, hey, he's doing it. I might as well go in and get me, go go and get me a little wallet. Let me give me a little wallet. Let me get some Gucci shoes. I don't care if they they ain't my size. I, I, I got me some Gucci shoes. The looting, for me, a person who believes in building businesses and serving people and making money the legitimate way doesn't even enter my mind. Because like I said, I'm not out there. I'm not part of anything. So it, it would never even occur to me. And once again, I urge you, you know, if you're going to protest, protest during the day, but have your butt at home at night. My, as my aunt Josephine says, nothing good happens between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Nothing good happens. So, you know, protest during the day, but be at home at night, be somewhere safe, be somewhere where, because essentially, like I said in my last video, Trump wants martial law. Trump wants to put tear gas on people. They're out like there was in Minneapolis where the National Guard was walking through a residential area and they were yelling, get inside to the people who were sitting on their porches. And then they stopped at this one house and they just start firing these rubber bullets and then the people went inside and I was just like, we're really in a police state where you can't sit on your front porch in your own house. This is, you know, this thing is, because see, one of the things that's happening is with the lockdowns, people gave up a lot of their rights. And now th this is being a big push to give up even more of your rights, like the right to sit on your front porch and be unmolested. I mean, we're getting very much to a police state. We're getting very much to martial law. And people are pushing back because it has gotten so ridiculous, it has gotten so crazy that people are left with no choice, that they're like, something's wrong. And I think the looting is a byproduct of repressed desire because over half of the country makes less than $33,000 a year. So they, there are many people who have pent up the demand, like uh, one of my friends on Facebook who believes erroneously that there will be a V-shaped recovery. All this pent up demand. I do agree, there is pent up demand. And that's one of the reasons that people are looting. It's like, hey, it's, it's 9.30 at night. It's just me and the rest of the looters. Let me go ahead and grab whatever. And people are running. And what, what was so crazy was I saw this elderly lady walking in Target. I'm like, Miss Sally, what are you doing up in Target? I mean, it was clear this woman was an older woman and she was up in Target with the looters. I was like, what, what, what's going on, Miss Beck, Miss Sally? Why are you up in Target? 
why are you looking to be 60, 70 something years of a, she just up there walking around the target, out, trying to get her five finger Becky discount. I'm just sitting there like, what is going on? Because see, I am not a member of herd mentality and herd mentality can be very, very, very powerful. You're out in the middle of the herd. It can be really powerful. It can be extremely seductive because you're out here, George Floyd, George Floyd, George Floyd, no justice, no peace, George Floyd. You get caught up. I'm going to tell you how her programming can happen. And it, it, it's, it, it's all about proximity. It's all about where you are. When I was in the army at Fort Dix, New Jersey in boot camp, I remember, and this was my first experience with herd mentality and group programming. We were about our fourth or fifth week and we were marching around the squad and then our voices were echoing off the buildings and it, the cadence was going and I started to feel that in my bones. I was like, we doing something, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I started to feel it. And that's the power of herd mentality that you could literally be somewhere and the next thing you know, you're reprogrammed to do some stuff that you normally would not do because you caught up. And I remember that because I, rem I was like, man, because the day, you know, at the end of the day and we were going to bed, I was just like, I was talking to some of my you know, roommates. I was like, you know, the day when we were marching and did you feel that? That's like, yeah, man, I felt that in my heart. And we were just marching, singing the cadence. We weren't doing nothing special. So if you take that mentality and that level of programming and apply it to what's happening, it's very easy that someone just woke up, I'm going out, I'm gonna protest for George Floyd, the injustice. And next thing you know, it's 9.30 and they looting. They're smashing windows. I also, I'm gonna tell you something else too. There is joy in destruction. I remember years and years ago, I got these two big deaths from a girl I was dating. And I was getting ready to move and I invited my friend over, Daryl, and we just had to, we start tearing up these, it, it was fun. Like if you've ever demoed a house, smashing walls and stuff, it's fun. Tearing up stuff is fun. We tore up these desks, we kicked them and all this other stuff. We had a good time. So there's another element to this destruction. Yes, there's a third party stirring the pot, but there is something fun about destroying something. There is fun about seeing glass shatter. There is a level of enjoyment in the tearing down of certain structures. And this is what's happening. Now, right now, it is probably five o'clock and I got in my car before I started doing this video and I just went out to check the traffic. And normally this time, 285, which isn't too far from my house, is a parking lot. I was able to get on 285 and zoom. I, I, I could have did 100 miles an hour if I wanted to, which means that the traffic hasn't come back and I don't see the traffic coming back for many, many months, if not a few years. And this is another element that's playing into this. People are unoccupied. You don't understand how much time work takes up of your life until it's gone. You know, you work an eight hour a day, so 30 minutes for lunch or an hour for lunch, that's nine hours. Then, you know, you, you take your 30 minutes to get to work. So that's a 10 hours, that's 10 hours of your day consumed by work. So the average person is spending 10 to 12 hours per day in some activity for work. That's almost half the day. And this is another issue that's happening with these 42 million people who don't have jobs. They don't have nothing to do. They just sitting around and this lights the perfect environment for this 
this mayhem and destruction because these people are not gainfully employed. I was in the military, one of my uh, uh, platoon sergeants was like, we need to be gainfully employed today, gentlemen. We're gonna go to the motor pool and we're gonna conduct some pre preventive maintenance. You know, he was always having us do stuff. Like we would like go to the tow room, which was a warehouse where we would keep tents, nets and stuff. It was always like that. And I understood that when we were gainfully employed, we had a good day of work, a good day of productive activity. When we were off, it was better because we were working, we were doing something. So we got to cut, you know, get off. We cut up, we drink a few brewskis. It was different. Now you have people, they don't have anything to decompress from. You can't decompress from sitting at home all day doing nothing. So these people are, they're not gainfully employed. They're in a situation where they have no purpose. And this is one of the worst things in the world for a person to be in, to have no purpose. When you have no purpose, you have no reason to wake up. You have no reason to jump in the shower. You have no reason to brush your teeth. You're just, existing and this is what a lot of people are doing right now they're just existing i mean every day i wake up and i watch the news and i just see crazy stuff and one of the things that is deeply troubling like the looting you know these companies if they're smart they have insurance so they're going to be re renumerated for that that's kind of like you know it's a free fall whatever but what's really troubling is the violence, the unmitigated violence. I am seeing more women be beaten, not just like, you know, there was a woman and the cops, the cops just pushed her down hard. And I mean, I can tell it hurt because the way she was moving when she was on the ground. I have never seen this level of violence against women ever in my life. I mean, I'm seeing like the one, the chick and her husband who were, you know, and they literally beat this woman with a two by four, just psh, psh, psh. what is going on with that? These women are not even, these women, they're not like starting the fights. You know, I can see if the woman came at you, hit you over the head with a garbage can, you had to defend yourself. No, these women are just out there and they're being assaulted and beaten and shot. What is up with that? I think society has become emotionally unregulated. And it's like, if you out here, you can get this work. Whatever we got planned, you can get this work. We don't care. We don't really care about you. We don't care about your mama. We don't care about your pops. We don't care about you. It is very, very troubling because of this outward, extreme level of hostility. I mean, I was just amazed because it looks like these cops and these cops are wilding out. Like Google it. You can see the New York police literally running people over in their vehicles, just running folks over. And it is crazy. Now we will get past this when I don't know, because as I did in the other video, Trump wants martial law. Trump is on the phone with these governments and saying, y'all need to stop being punks. Y'all need to show a force, uh, more force. You need to be more aggressive in handling this. You need to, you know, let these protesters know what's going on. And, and I did a video where these protesters are being a cover for the third element, like these bricks. I mean, Google it, all these bricks just showing up at these, you know, these, these sites. And then people's like, well, there's gotta be cameras. Um, you've not watched like this show. I forget what's this show. It was this guy and they had this computer and they can see bad things. I forget what it was. Cause the guy was glasses. He looked kind of British. I forget the name of the show, but there are ways for you to make moves and be undetected. There are so many ways. So, you know, there, there must be cameras. Well, first of all, they're not even looking for this third party. They're not even looking for them. They're not even like, hey, you know, there's something really wrong with this. 
these bricks just showing up. These cop, old cop cars being placed in the street and set on fire. There have been public record of cops looting and starting agitation. What's that about? These are some strange times, my friends. These are some strange times. But with the looting, uh, that's going to calm down at some point. As long as these protests and riots keep going on, the looting will be present. It's just an element of it. And I'm like looking at my Facebook friends' conversations like there are some people like, okay, you, you want to talk about the looting and the violence, but you don't want to talk about the police brutality. And I'm just sitting there in my mind. I'm trying to like what happened to George Floyd was unconscionable and it shouldn't have happened. But like I said, in my mind, why aren't the rioters going to the prison where he's held and like bring him out so we can hang him? This is what they used to do in the old days. They used to go back to the point of conflict. They wouldn't be out here attacking Target or Louis Vuitton. They would be attacking the police, you know, like in Minneapolis when they attacked the police proceeding. All right, I, I get that. I feel that, all right? This is where the injustice is coming from. This is where we're going to take our hate and anger and we're going to solve this problem. And they had those cops running for their lives. Okay, I, I can feel that. But this whole thing of harming and addressing people that have done nothing, that we're really not a part of this, I don't get that. I don't get that. Maybe it's the way that I think. I think in a very logical manner. Because if I had a beef with somebody, my beef would be with that person, not with someone who's apart from the situation. So I don't understand this well i do understand why it's going on because people are pissed people are pissed people are mad these lockdowns were not good for mental health suicide rate is skyrocketing domestic abuse is skyrocketing um it was crazy it, it's just crazy what is going on. And once again, I feel that this is going to be a really bad fall. You know, right now Trump is like, oh, third quarter, we're going to start working our way out of this. We're going to explore fourth quarter is going to be good. I don't see it like that because as long as unemployment continues to mount and all evidence indicates that it will, it's not going to get better. And then when you start seeing that these people who got laid off from a job due to no fault, have no money and they get evicted, this starts a nasty chain of consequences because first of all, you don't have no money. Now your credit is bad. You've got an eviction on your credit record. And for some people, they're going to have an eviction and they're going to have a repossession on their credit. This is going to make their credit lives really hard for many, many years to come. And it's just kind of like someone's down and you kicking them and you, you, you just keep kicking them and hit them with a bat when they, when they already on the mat. And once this stuff starts to manifest itself and go into it, because like I've been urging people, like if you can pay your rent, pay your rent. Don't play with these people because they will get you up out of there. They're not going to have any sympathy for you. It's like, yeah, you know, you lost your job. I understand. But hey, rent is still due. I got bills I got to pay and you ain't paying your bills. That puts me behind. So I got to get you out and get someone else in there. So I just see it really being bad for the fall. I see it um, being really crazy in the coming months because this is what's happening now. And I think the template has been set with the lockdowns to see just how much further can we push Americans. And they reached the tipping point where America's like, nah, I ain't going for that. I'm about to push back and I'm push back hard. And the reality is there are more of us than there are of them. And this, and this is something that's happening with the National Guard and people in the military. Many of these folks are like, I'm not going to do that. They're, they're refusing to comply with their orders. 
because they know it's wrong. They know that this is wrong. And I'm like, you know, Trump used tear gas on peaceful protesters to get to a church so he can hold the Bible up. I want you to think about that. And, you know, there are many people who love Trump and who are going to vote for him, regardless of what he does, they're going to vote for him. And this is what he's doing. And you still think that this is the sign of a good leader. As I had mentioned before, go around the world, go to Google machine, do your research, and you will see that many economies have not been as beat up as ours. And you gotta ask yourself, why? Why did this happen? Why do we have virtually a 25%, because they keep saying it's 14%, do the math. 42 million people out of 160 million people working. It's not 14%, it's 20 something percent. Ask yourself, why are you being lied to and why are you being, because right now there's a lot of people feeling pain, feeling a lot of pain. Ask yourself, why was this allowed to happen in the greatest country in the world? Why do we have so many people suffering? Why are we in this situation? What is going on in the world? Ask yourself these questions. Because when you ask yourself these questions from that vantage point, it becomes very strange. Like, yeah, why did that happen? You know, Germany has an unemployment rate of 3.5%. Germany, 3.5%. And we're sitting at 20 something percent. What's the difference? Germany has a lot of socialist policies where they take care of the workers. And I don't know if this is going to happen, but if the Democrats get the Senate and the presidency, you will see an ushering in of the New Deal. You will see a New Deal. You will see many of these programs. You'll see a lot of this socialist notions happen. You will see that the national deficit will skyrocket. And I really want to see what the GDP is going to be at the end of the year. Because we may be in danger of our GDP being less than our national debt, which doesn't bode well for the future. But because of certain economic forces that are happening, if the Democrats get the power of both houses and the presidency, you will see some of these generous, I'll start doing stimulus update videos. Because at that point, it will become real. These things will start to happen. They will get it like, you could probably see the first, if they win in November, January, you could see the first real stimulus proposal. Because right now, the Republicans ain't having it. They're not going to extend the unemployment bonus. They're, they ain't happening. They ain't happening. So America, what you need to do is start planning for your economic future. So what I have for you is 30 days to 2,500. Go ahead and get that. What I have for you is the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success. Go ahead and get that. And if you can do it, get the money management program, links below, get all of that, and we can start working on your economic future together. And if you haven't, subscribe to Savage Finance and begin to watch the videos from the very first video up to the day, because this is how you're going to become financially literate. That's what I'm going to do for you over there. So that's all I have for you. Check out this next video right here.